Hey, how's it going, guys? I'm going to do a video today on a question that I got asked on a, on a daily basis. And that is, what kind of coaxial strippers do I use? And, you know, which ones do I recommend? And are they expensive? And is this something that you can readily available buy in a retail store? Or is this a specialty order item tool? You know, they're going to have to wait forever to get. 95% um, of the time, when I'm asked this question, I'm actually doing a job. And sometimes I'm asked the question because the customer's being cheap. Let's be honest. Or the customer may be on a budget and they're trying to live within their means and they figure they can try to do it themselves, which I can't fault them for that. Everyone has a budget. Or two, maybe they just don't mind getting their hand dirty or they've never done it before and they have an interest in doing it. And either way, um, they're not any huge trade secrets. You know, I'm really open and honest and I explain to the customers and I give my honest opinion on what they should buy. Um, and I kind of seen a lot of these videos on YouTube of people giving their own opinions and I was just like, whoa. This is why we have so many service calls. This is why we go to these houses and we're like, you did this? How'd you learn to do that? Or who told you that? And you're like, YouTube. So I'm like, oh man. So here's my um, 15 uh, plus years in the field as a low voltage guy to say, uh, if you're starting to watch a video and <laughs> he pulls out one of these and says, oh, you can use this. Uh, stop watching that video. If he start pulls out one of these and says, oh, you can use a set of side cutters or dikes, stop watching that video. He pulls out some of these, need a nose, you could use some of those, you don't need to buy strippers. Look, people, they're not expensive. So if you're going to do it yourself, do it the right way. We're not talking hundreds of dollars on the tool. So buy the right tool, learn how to use it, save yourself the money by having somebody else come out. Get the satisfaction of doing it yourself. And don't create yourself additional work or additional expenses. By doing it, not doing it the right way, have to contact your cable provider and have somebody come out and say, oh, who did this? It looks like crap. And then you have to sit there and be like, oh, my brother-in-law did it, knowing damn well you did it. Uh, and then they charge you to fix it. So here's some solid advice, honest opinion. So take it to your heart, <laughs> spend a couple bucks, and learn how to do it the right way. Um, and these tools will last forever, so you'll have them probably the life that you own your home if you're only using these, you know, for odds jobs around the house. So I'll go over some of these options, and we'll, I'll be back. Okay, so my first recommendation, or what I personally use, is the Gennard. UST 500s. That's these bad boys right here. Here we go. See that? Okay. Why do I recommend them? Well, uh, first off, the reason I recommend them is because they last. Uh, the blades actually, according to the manufacturer, will last a, for over 5,000 cuts. I replace them about once a year. Uh, every season, I'll buy a new set. Um, and then what I basically do, I don't throw the other ones out because every now and then you lose your pair or you have somebody working with you for some reason doesn't have it or whatever, but I don't throw them out. So I'll have two or three laying around and then, um, the other good thing about it is actually you, when the blades dull out, you technically don't have to replace the entire unit. So that's why I said, if I spend $20 on this and it lasts me an entire year, nah, I don't really care. So big deal. Um, I have an extra one set it so if I need it I have it but you could actually pull this cartridge out and replace just the cartridge so you know if, if you're using it a lot you know then you know then and it dulls out or you, you just don't think it's making a good cut yeah you could just buy the blades um, but like I said mine's like I replaced my entire thing about once a year and then I normally have two or three of these laying around in my truck and if I dropped it in the snow and I was up at a pole or I was doing something in an attic and I lost, who knows, but whatever, then I always have a spare. So why do I like these? They have a decent spring on them. So when you actually are cutting them, when you put in the cable inside of here, it actually does, you know, uh, it does grab it pretty well. So the other thing is it has a stopper right here. So that's not so much for you know, these guys like myself who are used to uh, stripping cables because uh, you're kind of just do it like second nature but if you're new to the if you're new to doing this it's kind of good because you can actually set it in there and know where to stop it so that when you're stripping it so I generally just 
push on this. I put my finger in here. I give it a good spin two or three times this way. I give it a couple spins two or three times that way. Just grab it, pull it away, and bam, there you are. So some of the other cool features on this is, so then you just take that out, knock it out. You got your scraps in there, throw that on the ground, and you're good to go on your next connection. Okay, so on this actual first hole right here, you can do, um, there you go. You can actually do RG, RG6, RG59, and RG11. If you want to do RG11, you have to take this cartridge out and flip it the opposite direction, but you can. On the second hole, you can actually do a round cable or network cable, and this on top right here is adjustable, so you can raise or lower that blade that's inside there. You see that little blade in there? That's what that's for, like a tensioner. All right, and the third, you can actually cut all different types of cable. And then the very last one, you can actually use it for four or six pair flat cable. So, you know, so this actual tool will be able to do basically anything you really want to do in your home. Any kind of coaxial cable, any kind of networking cable, any kind of phone cable. It's like an, an all-in-one universal stripper um, that will last, you know. So where do I buy this tool? I buy this tool actually personally at Fry's Electronics, which is local to me. Okay, and I pay a whole whopping $13.99. Ready, people? <laughs> so don't be cheap. <laughs> so yes, it's $13.99. So if you have Fry's Electronics in your area, walk in, buy it, you're good to go. If you don't have Fry's Electronics, uh, I'm, in the description, I'm actually going to list a link to the manufacturer. You can put in your zip code. It'll tell you any authorized dealers or retailers in your area. You could buy it there or you could order online. Um, if you have a job you need to do today and it's not available to you, so I have options. Two different actual strippers that I would recommend um, that are available at Home Depot and Home Depot is everywhere nationwide, so anywhere. So one other thing is that keep in mind this thing is pretty much on my tool, on my either my tool bag or it's in my tool pouch, uh, rain, shine, snow, you know, and uh, the blades hold up. They actually don't get really rusted out. I used to use a lot of ideals, um, and that would be the problems I'd have with the blades. The, the strippers work awesome, but the but the actual blades would rust up on me quite a bit, and then they they'd get dulled out because they're actually rusting. So, and I understand if you oil them, blah blah. There's all that argument, but let's be honest. When you work in the industry and you work in the field, rain, shine, or snow, just like a mailman, there's no excuses. So you're working. So it is going to get wet. It is going to get full of dirt. So I just felt that these blades are a little more durable. And I like the fact, just how it felt in my hand, the comfort zone. Um, I like that it actually had this loop in there. Um, and I really like, it just kind of felt like second nature in my hand, you know. So, you know, you're just doing things with your hands. You're not actually really looking at what you're doing. Uh, the tension on this spring is really well. I've actually had some others that I bought and that spring popped out. So <laughs> the spring pops out, then the whole thing doesn't work anymore and it's trash. So be careful also with some that look like this. You know, they sell some of these on eBay or, you know, Amazon. Just because it looks like this um, doesn't mean it's actually going to work as well. You know, so like I said, it's not expensive. So just buy a legit one, not a knockoff one, and you won't have any problems. So. I don't have the actual two of the strippers uh, with me um, that I'm going to recommend. Have I personally used them both? Yes. Uh, you know, I lost mine or whatever reason I didn't have some or I needed an extra set. I have used both. So I'm going to list them in the order that I'd recommend them. Uh, they both work well, um, but there's pros and cons of everything. So I'll go over those as well. So I'll be back. Okay guys, so my second choice, if I did not have my actual strippers that I use every day with me or I wasn't able to purchase the Gennards that I like to use, my second choice would be these clients. And everybody knows that anyone in the industry, whether it be electrician or low voltage uh, client, they do make good tools, so I can't not client. Uh, but there are some pros and cons to this versus the one that is my first choice. For one, the obvious this is purely a coaxial stripper so it will do the job of coaxial stripping however the other stripper that I did recommend has the option of the RG6 the RG59 uh, line the RG11 um, you know this one will do it as well uh, but it does not have the option for the cat5 cable or circle cable or uh, phone pair or 
a round cable. So that's just purely a coaxial stripper. And the other one, it basically is across the board. Anything in low voltage that you'd want to do, you could basically use it for. Um, so if I did not have my strippers with me and I needed to pick up a pair and it was the walking Home Depot, these are the ones that I would buy. Now, why do I not have these uh, as my primary strippers other than the fact that they obviously only do coaxial cable? Um, one is the tension. Um, and the other, and the strippers that I recommend, they obviously are spring loaded, so it is putting a little tension on the coaxial strip, on the actual coaxial cable as you're stripping it. Uh, and these ones and the clients, uh, there is no spring load, so the actual tension is just that hardened plastic, or sometimes even just the hardened plastic isn't um, putting enough tension to really uh, do a clean cut. So you're finding yourself pressing down with your thumb uh, to really push in a little bit of extra weight to make that clean cut. Uh, the other thing that I noticed uh, is that I've actually had those cartridges. So you'll notice there's black and there's a blue one. And it's because one would be for your standard RG59 line or RG, RG6. And the other one would be for your RG11. And I have had the uh, secondary cartridge fall out just because it got bumped. Um, and I felt that those cartridges kind of get loose. So I have actually lost cartridges with this particular one. So I used to actually use these quite a bit until I found uh, the Gennard at Fry's Electronics. And ever since then, that's all I've ever used. So they'll do the job. Um, they won't have as long as a durability. They do a clean cut. Um, but if you have the time to order the Gennards, I would recommend you order those. Um, otherwise, you know, pick these up. Uh, the third option that I have is another set of clients. I will show you those as well. Also available at Home Depot. I'm showing these two different ones because the ones that I'm showing you right now sometimes sell out quick. So you might not have, you, they might not have these in stock at Home Depot. So at least you have a second option at Home Depot that you could pick up. So let me show you what those look like. Oh, and um, just on a quick note, these actual um, strippers <laughs> cost a little more than the actual strippers that I use. These are $21.97. So... Uh, let's go to the, the last, third and last option. Okay, so for my third and final option are these clients. The model is VDV110-061. These are purely only uh, coaxial stripper. Uh, this will not cut RG11. This will only cut RG6 and RG59 line. Um, will it cut the cable well? Yes, a good clean cut. The blades may not last as long, uh, but it is $12.97. It is spring-loaded for the tension. I have seen also where you have to press down at the end of the black, uh, kind of with your index finger to uh, add a little additional tension to make it a clean cut or cut all the way through. So in a bind uh, for $12.97, I guess if it's a throwaway tool or a spare tool, uh, not a bad deal. But if I was going to be making a ton of connections or you have to use this on a regular basis, I would not recommend this. Um, but like I said, it does do the job. It does make a clean cut. Just the durability is not necessarily there. And you may have to apply a little additional pressure on that black part to make a clean cut or cut all the way through. So there are my... Uh, recommendations all right so you made it to the end of the video so I think you can now have a clear understanding of why I recommended the strippers that I recommended you know pros and cons to all of them so if you're in a bind you need a set of strippers you know what you gotta do right but if you have the option to wait or get the ones that I recommend I highly recommend that you do you know so uh, you may be saying, okay, you know what, I know you showed it briefly, but how do I strip the cable again? So let me show you really quick how to strip the cable. And I'm also going to tell you, now when you're looking for a cable, you're going to see RG, an indoor cable for your home, right? You're going to see RG6, you're going to see RG59. RG59 is was originally made for analog cable or antenna, so don't buy it. Don't waste your money. Buy RG6. Only buy RG6, okay? Now you're going to see different shieldings. You're going to see dual shield, quad shield. You know, those shieldings are just how many shieldings are literally over the coaxial cable, you know, so you don't have RF leakage or interference of all the lines being together. If you have 50 lines that are tied together like this, you know, then worry about it. You know, if you have 
one line run into your bedroom and you installed in that same wall two phone lines two network lines two cable you're not going to have a problem okay uh, that's for more commercial install that you're going to have a ton of lines together and you're just worried about causing interference because the lines are all zip tied together so standard rg6 you're good to go inside well, if you're going to do it outside they do have plenum which would have something to be a little more durable from the weather or they have flood cable which has like a silicone type caulk inside to keep it from getting water inside of it so when it comes to fittings you're going to have your twist on fittings or you're going to have crimp fittings or compression fittings only buy compression fittings I'll also go over what tools to buy in another video and how to put those fittings on so again this is how you actually just strip it you take your stripper you open it up you got your little guider right there that's where you stop where your line is so you add it up right there strip it two times forward two times backwards pull it off you're done and then you just take this foil and you pull it back at all your braiding you can use a pocket knife for your finger I'm just stripping this back make sure all that braiding is pulled back if any of this braiding is actually sticking up and it touches this copper part it grounds it out and now you're you're all bad so thanks for watching I hope this helps it's my two cents God bless thank you Rick